Where we left off from the second tale is the curse has been lifted. Guybrush is now aware of everything that's going on and he's in pursuit of LeChuck. He basically wants you to join his crew. So he leaves you his memoirs so that you can follow him and his crew to Monkey Island. Monkey Island is this quintessential desert island. It's deep jungle. It feels dangerous, it feels untamed. It's a very tropical, lush, exotic island, which really serves as a base for very explorative gameplay rather than more linear. Um, so you'll be able to wander and discover as much as you want. The vibe that we wanted to go for with that is more of a jungle vibe. So you're starting to see some of the bespoke pieces of foliage that, that we have on the island. We've gone for more of them heavy hanging palm trees that have loads of like leaves that kind of weigh down the, the trees and it's sort of just teeming of, of sort of foliage. We've had to do lots of kind of trickery behind the scenes to make these trees performant and still look really dense and feel like closely packed in around you as you're moving through it. You know, you go to Monkey Island, they sort of explore tune for that. So I've pretty much just copied the original tune and, and sort of it's all the sort of like log drums and rain sticks and all that sort of stuff. And it's got a, a kalimba part on it, but I introduced the Soothies melody on top of that. So I just had to adjust some of the notes within the Monkey Island tune so they didn't clash with the Sea of Thieves theme. But I'm really pleased with the way that's kind of come together, the two IPs and worlds married together. We have a lot of creative freedom with what we can put in these islands. So it's managing that balance, I suppose, of having this iconic area that we want to replicate and make people recognize, while also making it look like people going, that's Sea of Thieves. That has been challenging, but it, it has meant that we've got some really cool kind of blended together areas such as the stone monkey head. Looking at that, you can recognize it so clearly from the original games, but it's got that Sea of Thieves feeling to it. Like it's all the, the textures are very much like what we would have done. It's been really nice to blend the two. And we had to introduce these puzzle elements um, to make sure they wouldn't stand out. We took inspiration from that giant iconic stone monkey head that's already present, which has resulted in basically all of the puzzle elements being a bunch of stone monkeys. Monkeys everywhere. All aspects of the tale, we've sort of looked at it under a lens of how do we stay true to Monkey Island, but bring it to Sea of Thieves. How can we add our spin on it whilst remaining true to what Monkey Island was as a game? So you'll see that in the visuals, but also the puzzles. A lot of the difference in the puzzles from the puzzles that you find on Monkey Island compared to the ones that you find on Melee Island is that they're sprinkled throughout the whole island. So you might find one item or, or one mechanism that gives you kind of a clue as to what you should do, but it doesn't give you the whole picture. So it really requires you to travel throughout the whole island to really piece those pieces together and figure out what you need to do with them. And it's very similar to the gameplay style of the point and click adventures that you get in Monkey Island. Well, hello there. Helm and Tufrot has pretty much been living in solitude on the island for a long time until Guybrush and his crew arrived. He's basically ravaged the wreck of the sea monkey and repurposed all the pieces he can get his hands on into some makeshift traps and monkey defenses. Oh, I see how it is. Players will go up this really large cliffside and they'll climb and they'll wonder what's up there. And when they finally get to the top, they'll be like, oh, it's Herman's primitive art, look at that. And then the players that aren't as familiar with the previous original games will see it and immediately want to play with it because it's such a playful, quirky item. We've got these new physics simulations where we've got the primitive art that destroys the totem, sending rocks flying everywhere. And we've got the mass trap where players will see it literally collapse when they hit it with the cannon. Puzzles are very much physical. You're going to be moving things, lifting things, moving objects around, very much like you would in the original Monkey Island games. We really wanted to capture that in, in parts of the island, that jungle feel, contrasted very much with um, what's below uh, the, the island where we've got the caverns. Again, another challenging, I think, piece to bring through. 
So you enter the catacombs by going through the mouth of the monkey head, which in itself is a very grand moment as the tongue kind of unfurls out the monkey and players go in. They then descend down the skeleton of the monkey. Things are somewhat like the devil's roar, but push to 11. So we've got these, you know, almost nightmarish visuals and it feels demonic at some points. Uh, and it's this constant threat of danger and being lost in these endless catacombs. It really pushes the player to be like, okay, things are getting serious. Any respectable pirate would have a, have a trouble navigating the labyrinth within the catacombs. But luckily, you made a friend that will get you ahead. <laughs> In the catacombs, it's obviously very maze-like, and they'll be using the head of the navigator to explore this space. He'll be guiding them by sort of looking in the direction he wants them to go. There may be moments where they're not sure if he knows where he's going, because he'll be having a think, and maybe questioning if he's gone the right way, but ultimately, he will always lead them on the true path. He's really out there, and it wouldn't fit straight on into Sea of Thieves. Like, it's a bit too gruesome. So yeah, it's a bit more mature than what we would usually do. So we had to change the design quite a bit to make it fit. To make this tale feel a lot like a finale, we actually build up the gameplay. We build it up and escalate it through its tension. So you're wandering around the island and that's pretty relaxed and you can explore as you want. But as soon as you go down into the catacombs, the whole atmosphere changes. It feels dangerous. It feels like you don't really know where you're going. You feel that tension and you feel a little bit stressed. And then you go on a great chase and you get to encounter and have a final epic battle with LeChuck. Players will be accompanied by all the iconic characters. They've got Kate Capsize, Guybrush, Elaine, and they'll be sailing on the Mad Monkey in a lava river, chasing down LeChuck to ultimately confront him at the end. One thing I really enjoyed doing was the River of Lava and you get to sail down this river and do a ship battle. It's just something we've never done before on Sea of Thieves. You've got rocks falling, you've got lava falls coming in, cascading, and it opens up into these, these cavern areas with lava falls coming in. It gives you that real sense of danger and atmosphere as you're chasing these ships down, the, down this river. We've lived in this world for months now. We've put so much like love and, and effort into it. When it's finally out there in the world, I just love uh, seeing everyone's sort of reactions to it. Don't let them get away! The way that you have to piece together why you need these objects and how quirky they seem is very fun. So I'm really excited to see how players uh, take that in. And I think ultimately, it offers a great conclusion in both mechanics and storyline, where you're really, everything's coming together, gangs are there, and you're going to solve the problem once and for all. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked what you just saw and want to stay up to date with all the latest Sea of Thieves news, then hit subscribe and click that little ship's bell for all those notifications. Cheers.